today. <coughs> and uh, it don't matter what we go through down here. It's temporal. Sister First Singer said it came to pass. Yeah. Amen. That's right. And uh, we're almost through it. Yeah. Like, hallelujah. I'll tell you what. Uh, when I got in. Thank you. When I got in church and uh, I didn't know how long before the Lord was going to come. But I would have never dreamed that we would have seen this far. I really wouldn't. But it's God's <coughs> grace. He's, he's, he's still fishing. He's still reaching and beckoning and wooing and calling and dealing with souls. Whosoever will, let him come. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. If you got a need today, why don't you let it be known by raising your hand? Yes, God sees these hands. Let's just, why don't we stand and let's go to the Lord in prayer today. And just ask God to just reach into every heart and give us a burden that we can uh, see somehow our loved ones. Uh, experience the first love that we felt when we first got saved. Amen? Alright, let's pray. Father, we just love you today. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your goodness and your mercy, Lord. Oh, God, how good and how sweet it is, Lord, for those that dwell together in unity, Lord. One mind and one accord with you and your Savior, Lord. Lord, that you would draw us near to you today. God, in his name that would call us, cause us to be a part of all that is in your Lord, don't let us be blind to it, Lord, but let us be aware of what you see that you want us to see, Lord, today. You know the burden of all each heart for every hand that was raised. You see the representation. You know what it means today, Lord. I pray, God, that each love of Lord will turn to you.
page 319.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, we're going to come to you this time this morning for the Sunday morning tithes and offerings. And that's not the reason we calm down on the worshiping. <coughs> Amen. The reason we calm down on the worshiping is... <coughs> because those of you that were up here worshiping, you're going to continue to worship. Amen. <laughs> and we want to get everybody else to where they feel the liberty to worship. Amen. Yes, Father, we thank you for this day you've given us to worship you, and to honor you, and to love you today. We ask that you bless our hearts today and give them, Father. As we give them a cheerful heart, as given unto the kingdom of God. As if we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen.
Appreciate you for coming out to the house of the Lord. Amen. And uh, God is uh, it's another day so far to draw near to Him. And uh, I want you to know He's given and put before us the choice the choice of life and death Amen. before us today. And I just admonish you to choose life. Amen. If you got your Bibles, turn with me, if you will, to Jeremiah chapter 21. Jeremiah chapter 21. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 21. You know, Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet. Yes. And, um, I don't want to misquote or say anything wrong, but uh, did he ever realize a convert? Uh, you know what I'm saying? It just, uh, it, I've heard that, that, that nobody he ever witnessed to really ever turned to the Lord unless they did it as a people in groves or something, droves, you know. But uh, he was definitely called the weeping prophet. And he was beat, he was put in stocks, he was put in a pit mire up to his waist for the gospel right. and uh, for sharing the good news. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want you to know you need to be willing to pay whatever price God deems necessary that you might have life. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, Jeremiah chapter 21, verse 1 and 2. It says, The word which came unto Jeremiah from the Lord when King Zedekiah sent unto him pasture the son of Malchiah, and Zephaniah, the son of Maaseiah, uh, the priest, saying, Inquire, I pray thee, of the Lord for us. For Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, maketh war against us. If so be that the Lord will deal with us according to all his wondrous works, that he may go up from us. Verse 2 says, Inquire, I pray thee, Zedekiah is asking Jeremiah to inquire of the Lord. Inquire, I pray thee, of the Lord for us. For Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, maketh war against us. If so be that the Lord will deal with us according to all his wondrous works that, we may, that he may go up from us. Amen. Amen. Father, we praise you today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Oh, for your many blessings, God. We just thank you and we praise you for it. God, truly you are gracious and merciful to us. And uh, God, you're long-suffering and you're kind and you're, you're waiting, Lord. And I pray today that every heart, God, that is desiring to turn and yield to you would do that. Would do it, God, quickly. Would surrender their mind, will, and emotions. God, let them realize that it's a faith walk. Yes, They're going to have to just trust and obey. They're just going to have to just launch out and just take a step of faith and surrender. And, I, you know, the, the devil's going to tell them, Lord, that they're surrendering with their mouth only. But their prayer may be, God, that you'd show me how to surrender. Show me how to yield to you. I never want to be classified as those that are uh, ashamed of you. But God, I want to be grateful and thankful for all you've done for me and for mine, for all mankind, Lord. I praise you today and I love you. And I pray that you take our church to a higher plane than we've ever been before. God, show us how to worship you in spirit and in truth, I pray. In Jesus' precious name. And everybody said amen. 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 You can be seated today. <clears throat> Amen. Inquire, I pray thee, of the Lord for us. For Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, maketh war against us. If so be 
that the Lord will deal with us according to all his wondrous works that he may go up from us. And if you read these next several verses, it's not a, a pretty picture. It's not a glamorous thing. And I'm trusting and praying that this is not what anybody would be hearing from the Lord individually today or as a group, a, a body today. Let me read verse 3 on for you. It said, Then said Jeremiah unto them, Thus shall ye say to Zedekiah, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Behold, I will turn back the weapons of war that are in your hands, wherewith ye fight against the king of Babylon and against the Chaldeans, which besiege you without the walls, on the outside of the walls. And I will assemble them unto the midst of this city. And I myself will fight against you with an outstretched hand and with a strong arm, even in anger and in fury and in great wrath. And I will smite the inhabitants of this city, both man and beast. They shall die of a great pestilence. And afterwards said the Lord, I will deliver Zedekiah, king of Judah, and his servants and his people, and such as were left in this city from the pestilence and from the sword and from the famine into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and into the hand of their enemies, and into the hand of those that seek their life. And he shall smite them with the edge of the sword, and he shall not spare them, neither have pity, nor have mercy. And unto this people shalt thou say, Thus saith the Lord, unto this people, unto you and I, unto that people, that Zedekiah was trying to represent as a king unto the Jews. He says, I set before you in the last part of eight, verse 8, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. I set before you the way of life and the way of death. Right. You can either choose to live now and die later or die now and live throughout all eternity. Amen. And you're going to live throughout all eternity somewhere, either in heaven or in hell. Amen. Uh, remember the rich man in Lazarus? That's right. Remember, uh, you know, uh, God is the one that controls everything that goes on, our Heavenly Father. He has a plan, and when he cast, he said, I saw Lucifer fall from heaven as lightning. He was cast out of heaven. God cast him out. But uh, there's still work that the Lucifer had to do. Right. And it was to, uh, to tempt and to steal, kill, and destroy. That's right. And you say, well, if God loved us, why would he put all this temptation before us? Why would he uh, make it so hard for us to be a Christian? It's not hard to be a Christian. Amen. It's hard to be a lukewarm Christian. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. I've been there on more than one occasion. I've been there to where uh, the, the things of this carnal life were weighing heavily upon me. And I was having trouble having the faith to believe in God and to trust that God was going to work it out. Right. I, uh, I pray for y'all on a regular basis. You know, and uh, I call names, and I don't go down the list, but I got your faces. You know, and and uh, uh, I cry out to the Lord in behalf of people that I've cried out to the Lord for years gone by. And uh, uh, God knows what he's doing. Amen. Amen. Does that mean that God is still dealing with them and they may not have surrendered yet? Does that mean, you know, there's a, a Baptist pastor. When we were in Montrose, they were coming into town and coming in the back way, and they turned the corner there, and there sat our church just right off the corner. There was a house between us and, and the, the road that went beside the church there. And he said, there's your good church. Go to that little church. And this was a Baptist pastor telling his son to go to a Pentecostal church. And they came to our church, and God saved him and his wife. And after, do you remember how long Brother Dry had pastored? He had pastored probably huh? 10, 15 years. Uh, and uh, I don't know how long. It's been 20, 
25 years since then. And uh, he passed away this past week. But did you know he was a pastor that would cry over his people and he was a smoking pastor. And you say, well, he wasn't saved. I don't know about all that. That's between him and God. I don't know. I do know one thing. Uh, I asked him after he quit smoking, I asked him would he preach for us. And I don't think he ever preached for us. But they believe in closed. Uh, they, don't, they don't take communion with other churches. And they don't do a lot of things. And I don't know about all that. But I do know one thing. That uh, as long as people are praying for you, I believe there's hope. Yes. Amen. Because I believe when, you know, God looked at... Uh, uh, the prophet had told him to quit praying for Saul because God had given up on him. Right. Right. And uh, I want you to know you need to ask God. If you're in bed and you think about it, ask God, Lord, don't let me wind up in hell. Ask God, Lord, forgive me for my sins. Ask God, God help me to recognize and love truth. Yes. And I want you to know there's not but one truth in all this world. And that's the truth that's represented in this blessed book. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, and the Holy Ghost that he sent. He said, it's expedient for you that I go away. Yes. That the Holy Ghost might come unto you. For if I go not away, he said he couldn't send the Holy Ghost. In other words, he couldn't start the church age. Amen. There's other things that I don't understand that he couldn't do. But I want to just point out some things today that you can think about. As you're meditating upon the Lord. Uh, you don't want to consult God. Or talk to God in vain. You don't want to talk to God. With a divided heart. The Bible says a double minded man. Is unstable in all of his ways. You say well I don't feel double minded. I feel okay. You know the Bible says that when we were in sin. We were in darkness. And we were not troubled by our sin. Right. We became troubled by our sin when the Holy Ghost rested upon us and began to show us our sin and began to deal with our heart. God began to uh, work our heart. He began to massage our heart. He began to convict our life and let us see that we needed a Savior, that we really wasn't all that. The Bible says all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. And I want you to know if I do anything today, I want to represent my Lord in love and in faithfulness. Amen. That's the heartbeat that I have for yes. each one here today. Amen. First of all, it's vain for us to seek the Lord without repenting of our sins. That, that word vain there, you don't hear much of it uh, to, in today's hour, but there's a word that, that is uh, it's, it's narcissist. Narcissistic, narcissist. A narcissist person is a person that is in love with self. Right. A person that thinks that they can get away with whatever they're doing because judgment hadn't fell speedily and quickly upon them. They think they're getting away with it. Yeah. But I want you to know they're not getting away with it. God's angry with the wicked every day. That's right. That's right. Yes, he and for you to think. Anything in your heart that is contrary to the will of God, the Bible calls it iniquity. That's me doing my thing instead of doing God's thing. Yeah, amen. Me waiting for my time instead of God's time. You say, well, Pastor, when is it time for me to surrender to the Lord? When God's dealing with you. Yep, amen. 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 When you recognize that he was up here blessing Sister Maggie. Yes, he was. Yeah. And you could come. Least you could do. You know, back before I knew about the guys not supposed to be with the girls. I'd go to youth camps, or I'd go to camp meetings, or I'd go wherever. And I tell you what, if the men's side, which was over on the right hand side normally, if the men's side or the youth side got a little boring and a little dry and whatever, and I seen a a, a windfall or a, a Niagara Falls, or I seen something happening over here, and there was six or eight women and maybe a husband standing off over here, brother, I'd go get close to them. You say, you was living reckless and dangerous. No, I was living hungry. Yes. I was living hungry. Amen. What do you mean? I wanted life. I wanted...
power. I wanted the anointing. I wanted God to do something in me that I needed to where when I would go and preach to people, they would not sit there like bumps on a log, but I would be able to somehow pour life into them that they would have life unto life instead of death unto death because what we do is when the power of God comes on us and begins to deal with us, if we're not careful, we will become vain and think that because God doesn't zap us and strike us with lightning, it's going to be okay and He's going to look over it. Yeah, that's right. But all sin is going to face judgment. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's either going to face the blood of God's forgiveness or it's going to face the wrath of God. And God's going to judge it. Zedekiah sends to Jeremiah amidst his alarm. Nebuchadnezzar has come against him to attack. And he's scared, basically. And kind of he's running for his life. But, you know, something's missing here. You say, well, what's missing, Brother Jordan? I'm telling you, repentance. Repentance. Amen. There was no real fear of God here. Do you see what I'm saying? He wasn't really afraid of God. He was afraid of Nebuchadnezzar's judgment. Yeah. He was all afraid of all those chariots and horses of men. Remember, he had forgot what the Old Testament says there. Amen. Uh, whenever uh, Elisha was there with Gehazi, I think, and he was there in Dothan, and, and uh, he woke up before the prophet did, and uh, he said, Alas, Master, how shall we stand? In other words, what are we going to do? He looked out there and seen all them... Samaritans or Assyrians or whatever they were and see their horses and their chariots and, and he began afraid and began to tremble and he woke the prophet up and said what are we going to do and the prophet said Lord open his eyes Amen. and he opened his eyes and saw that the heavens were filled yeah. with horses and chariots of fire Amen. and the man of God said they that be with us are more than they that be with them Remember, there's only one third of the angels fell from heaven. Yeah. The smart crowd stayed with God. Yeah. I'm being honest with you. I'm not being yeah. funny. Yeah. I'm letting you know. How could anybody see the glory of the heavens that God had created right. and know and be aware and be in the presence of uh, uh, the New Testament compares it to Solomon how that the Queen of Sheba came from the south and said the glory has, the half has not been told your men that hold the door your men that stand there with the spear as people come in and out to see the king they're happy they're joyous they're excited amen what more could, could a person want in life than the joy of the Lord and she saw it in the early stages of Solomon But she said the act had not been told of what she saw. I believe God opened her eyes and showed her some things. He was dreading coming trouble and judgment. And, uh, but he wasn't sorry for what was bringing the judgment and the sorrow. And he wasn't concerned that the repentance was not there. God delivered those who also desire only to be free from the consequences of sin but still find pleasure in sin sin is awful of such awful mean that to be hated needs but to be seen seen too oft familiar with face we first endure then pity then embrace beware of sin when sin you get comfortable with sin the spots and the blemishes of sin will begin to come on you. You'll, when you cease to have a burden or asking God to deal with the sinner however he deems necessary, be careful. Whether it's your kid or your boss or your neighbor or whoever. You know, times of distress drive men to the Lord. Zedekiah came to God's man. They couldn't just go to God in the Old Testament times, you know, the, the veil of the temple had not been rent in twain from top to bottom like it was at the crucifixion. Today, you and I can go the same place the high priest could go. And he, he can only go once a year and not without blood. But that 
blood was pointing to the cross. Amen. God help us. Amen. People go to the church. People go to the preacher. People go to that Holy Ghost field grandma. Amen. Seeking help. Yes. And they don't realize if they're not careful, they'll kind of be using it like they would a rabbit's foot. Yeah. Just hoping right. for good luck. Yes. Just hoping that, uh, you know, the scripture says, in thy wrath, remember mercy. Right. But people today, I remember, I don't know why I hadn't even thought of this in years and years and years. It's maybe been eight or ten years since there was a, I believe there was a movie out called A Perfect Storm. All I remember about it is there was an advertisement and it showed, if I remember right, a, a big, big, big ocean liner or a big boat on a big wave out of the ocean. That's all I saw of it. And, uh, but they called it the perfect storm, I think, or something real close to that. And uh, you say, well, what did they mean by the perfect storm? I really don't know what they meant, but from listening to what uh, the commentators and different, and I didn't look it up, but I mean, people were talking about it. You know what I mean? I believe I was pastoring here, but if I wasn't, I wasn't, I don't know. But I do want you to know one thing. The perfect life down here apart from God is a horrible, horrible tragedy. Yes. Yes. It don't matter if there's Rolls Royces or three or four, five, six million dollar automobiles. For what shall it profit a man, a man if he gain the whole world Come on. Yes. and lose his own soul? Yes, or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? perfect storm I may be totally out of context but it wasn't really a perfect storm at all it was a disastrous storm I'm sure they calculated to the best of their ability to be safe but they wasn't safe you know in our own natural understanding my wife told me about some soldiers that had been taken prisoners and, and they uh uh, come back to the camp and they counted the shovels or whatever and there was one missing and the man told them that was watching them said alright tell us what's going on who hit the shovel or whatever or we're going to kill you and one man stepped forward and said I did it and they literally beat him to death and they left there and went back to the camp or whatever it was and everything and put everything together and they realized there had been a mistake. That all the shovels really were there. That that man gave his life to help others not to have to give their life. But Jesus gave his life for all mankind. Yes. Amen. Yes. But you have to allow God to deal with your heart. And you have to believe in faith. It don't matter how many inconsistent Christians, it don't matter how many hypocrites you've heard, it don't matter how many disappointments you've had from believers, you've got to realize that God is the only way through His Son for us to be saved. And He did say, I told you earlier, whosoever will, let Him come. Whosoever will, let Him come. I want you to know you can come to the Lord. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light in 1 John 1 and 7, we have fellowship one with another in the blood of Jesus Christ. His Son cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, if you think your life is a good life, you've been a good person, you don't covet, you don't steal, you don't live immoral, you don't do any of that, remember all of our righteousness is as filthy rags because... We came into this world blemished. That's right. If we had never stolen a paper clip, like Ray Comfort says, if we had never done any of those evil deeds, already we were a sinner. It don't matter that a baby is kind and gentle and loving for a while before they reach the age of accountability, way before they reach that age of really understanding what the things of God are about, enough to be saved. That selfish nature begins to get a hold of them. And we watch them. I watched some of my kids as they changed. I watched some of them as they, as they saw, I believe, the first temptation in certain areas in their life. The Bible says if we confess our sins, God is faithful. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to, forgive, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
And he says, and this is what you're doing if you don't trust the Lord to be your Savior. He said, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him, we make God a liar. Right. And his word is not in us. It's vain. It's vain for us to seek God without feeling sorry for our sin <clears throat> and for the shortcomings in our life. It's vain to seek God's help without submitting to God's will. It's like Zedekiah. I went on down and I read several chapters when I was meditating on this. I'd read previously and I was praying and, and I couldn't get away from this. Inquire, I pray thee, of the Lord for us. And you know, that's what so many people do. They look and they depend upon the preacher. They depend upon the church. They depend upon mom or dad or some godly person to be their anchor, to be their umbrella protection, to help them get to heaven. And they are praying for them. But I want you to know Jesus is the only one that can get us safely home. Amen? It's like Zedekiah, Zedekiah is wanting Jeremiah to be like a seer and consult God for him. He wants information. In other words, what's in it for me? He says, get me out of trouble. But Zedekiah is not willing, amen, to obey the commands and the dictates of God. He's not willing to do it on God's terms. He's not willing to surrender his mind and will and emotion to God. He wants to do it when he gets ready. He wants to do it to where he's comfortable doing it. He don't want to, to get out there and to be embarrassed or he don't want to, uh, he, he's afraid that God's going to call upon him that's going to uh, ask him to do something that he would be uncomfortable doing. Now believe it or not, when I was younger, I think I've shouted. I'm sure I did. I may have even ran. But I've never acted like some people. But I prayed a bunch of times. God, please. My wife says he don't remember. <laughs> uh, I prayed a bunch of times. God, don't ever let me be ashamed of you. Amen. Don't ever let me be ashamed of you. Amen. Many today would have God to be their servant. Be their Santa Claus, so to speak. Their prayer is that God would do their will. Do what they want. This is presumptuous. This conduct, amen, it's going gonna, it's gonna to deal you failure if you don't get on top of it and surrender to God. You see, the choice is ultimately between life and death. And don't ever try to separate this Christian walk down here too far from faith. Faith is going to be required. Yes, faith. If God's ever going to use you, the devil is going to be whispering or yelling in your ear whenever you feel like you need to do something. I've seen Sister Hannah shout around this church. I've seen several of you run. Brother Doug run, ran this morning. I've seen God do different things in your life. And I'm telling you many times when you do it, I've seen there's a, a lady, Sister Janie. I've seen Sister Janie come and Sister Janie would come up and have her hands in the air and she'd begin to dance and prance around the church and everything and I've talked to her about it. And did you know sometime she got up and she ran, went to run around the church, not because she felt so anointed, because she just wanted to prove to the devil that she still loved and wasn't ashamed of Jesus. Amen. That's not a hypocrite. That's somebody that wants to be a blessing. That's somebody that don't want to be intimidated by the devil. That's somebody that wants to prove to God, Lord, I want to make it. I want to be faithful. I want to choose you. I want to choose life over death. You see, that's what the choice is in verse 8 there. The choice is between life and death. And unto this people thou shalt say, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. They were free and open to make that choice, but they had to listen to the man of God rather than listen to the false prophets and the lies that was being told because there was people that was telling them, Don't listen to Jeremiah. 
And I thought, what a picture of us today. Of God is sensing and God is prompting us to do something one way for God. And the accuser, the devil, the liar is saying, you don't have to do that. God don't require that. You don't have to act that way. And you don't have to. But let me tell you, there's a place of victory in God. If you will just yield to the Lord and do. You need to remember the devil is not going to prompt you to do something that's going to glorify God. Amen, that's right. <clears throat> so if it's only going to make you look like a nut, but it's going to make people think this God thing may be real. Because why else would they act that way? You know, remember, the people of the world, God looks at our heart. He knows what's really going on in our mind, our will, and our emotions. God sees the real you and the real me. But the world, they only look at the outside appearance. They only see the shell of you and me. They can't discern in our heart. God has given you a free will. You know, there when they were there and the rich man said, Father Abraham, send Moses or one of the prophets. They'll go and tell because I've got five brothers and I don't want them to come to this awful place. And he said, if they will not hear the prophets and the peoples around in their day now, they wouldn't hear no one rose from the dead. And this is Jesus talking. He knew. God knew. False prophets were there to allure through the lust of the flesh, just like today. There's an easy way. There's an easy way. But that easy way is a way of compromise. That easy way is a way of death. That easy way is a way of lies. And, and it bringeth with it great torment. The devil seeks to trap, to steal, kill, and destroy, to take away from you the blessing that God has got for you. Right. All of us have opportunity today to choose life. And it's not something you just choose one time. But you choose day by day. Whether you're going to walk in victory or whether you're going to walk in defeat. It'd be nice if you just came down and surrendered to the Lord and all of your battles were over. But that's not the case. 1 Peter 3.11 says, Let him eschew evil. Let him avoid evil, the child of God. Let him do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it and ensue it, he says. Yeah. In other words, pursue after peace. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. What does that mean, sanctify the Lord God in your hearts? We know God is sanctified. God wants it to be sanctified in your hearts. Don't you believe a lie? Don't you believe a form of godliness that doesn't have power? But you believe the truth of God that will cause you to die to yourself, your mind, your will, and emotions to where you'll surrender to God. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you the reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you. If you really live a victorious life, sanctified, a life of righteousness, you're going to have a testimony. There's going to be people, be people watching your life and they're going to be asking you questions. Why do you do this? Why are you this way? Why that? And God will give you an answer that will help them to think and meditate. If you study to show yourself approved unto God, workmen that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 1 John 2 and 1 says, My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Yes. And he is the propitiation of our sins and not of ours, not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth 
God's word, but whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. That's what he's talking about. The word of God is being sanctified in your heart. Amen. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in God. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. My goodness, why would the Lord put that there? He don't want you to take it lightly. That's right. He wants you to count the cost. Yes. He wants you to consider your ways. Amen. It's vain for us to go to a person for help and us not be willing to admit our sin, our wrongdoing, what we've done that brought about this punishment that is happening to us. It's wrong for us to assume and just uh, think that God's going to take care of everything and we'll just have another foxhole experience. God, if you'll get me out of this, I'll serve you. And we get out of that war and that skirmish and somebody hurt us and they remind us and they say, oh, it got me out again. Yeah. Boys playing Russian roulette. And God keeps really good records. Yeah. God's not a vindictive God, but He's a righteous God yeah. that is going to judge all iniquity. Yeah. It is vain for us to seek God's help for deliverance from that which we are morally guilty of. There's people that their heart is filled with covetousness for that which does not belong to them. There's a moral necessity that you and I have in the physical body. We have to live our life not to ourselves. A just God cannot forgive an unrepentant heart. We have to be sorry for our sins. Figure out what's keeping you from surrendering to God. Figure out what's keeping you from surrendering to God. I'm telling you, God's conviction has been very, very thick and heavy for the last several weeks. And yet there's some here that are not budging that I can see from the natural. And they're not getting more tender. What I see as a pastor and a shepherd. But they're being re very dangerous. Very reckless. <coughs> Because God is wanting you to come to a place of decision. Yes. And you can't have a form of godliness and deny the power of God Amen. and be okay. Right. You've got to have enough godliness that it's going to lead you to a sanctified heart, mind, and life. Right. That means when somebody in the church does wrong, you're not going to want to flush the toilet and get rid of them. The scum of the earth. You know, you know, the person that goes to the bar and the wife's praying for them and they go to church and they may go to church once every year or two. But they go to the bar, they're miserable. If God's on their trail, God chastens those that he loves. If you wonder why you're so miserable, it's not your spouse. It's you. If you're wondering why you're so miserable, it's not the world that's around you. It's you. And I'm not sneezing. It's you. It's you. It's you. The simplest thing showed me one day and everybody that's come here very long has heard this. I was on Interstate 30. And I thought all of my friends that I was with during the week hanging out. I really thought I was better than them. Because I was a good person. 
I didn't steal. I didn't commit injustice to people I felt like. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. I didn't covet. I didn't do that. And one day, God caused me to remember or think of a vile, vile, immoral thought. And one of my good friends and his girlfriend was involved in it. And God showed me that I really wasn't all that. What I was thinking is just because The devil wants you to take care of you. To so and so with everybody else. And I had some friends that were like that. I mean, they didn't have the party hardy stuff, and you see them a half a walk away, and they're partying hardy. Did they just find something they forgot about? That's possible, but when you're following the devil, you don't think those possibilities like that. You think negatively. I want you to know, don't be vain. Don't be narcissistic. Don't be living your best life now and thinking you're suffering for Christ just because that there's somebody praying in your household. A just God cannot forgive an unrepentant heart. All that God does must be for your best. Best for the body of Christ. If a man needs chastisement from God, God's going to give it to him. Though they earnestly desire to be delivered from it. If judgment needs to come their way, it's coming. You're unless God, like the prophet, Elijah told, I believe, Hezekiah, set his house in order. He's about to die. And Elijah went to leave and wasn't even out of the courtyard yet. And God told him to turn around and go back because Hezekiah set his face to the wall and reminded the Lord that he had been faithful. He had done this and he had done that. And God smiled on him and showed mercy. And God added 15 years to his life. But did you know the 15 years that God added to his life? Was it Amasa or Amasai? What was his name? Manasseh. Manasseh. His son. Wouldn't he the most wicked king that... Hebrews, the Jews, or, or Jerusalem, or uh, one of them had. Yeah. He was wicked. And he didn't have to be born if Hezekiah would have trusted God. But Hezekiah didn't want to die. I don't say that everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Don't ever be afraid of what God has for you. Because he says all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. Amen. To them who are the called according to his purpose. Amen. Amen. God help us to be willing for God to deliver us. Or be willing for God to have his way with us. Job, God had his way with Job and it didn't make sense to hardly anybody. He was judged by his friends. He was judged by everybody. But I want you to know he had a choice. He could trust God. Or he could get upset with God. And he trusted God and chose life. And his life, it cost him all the life of his children. Did you know there's people today that are not serving God because God won't let them have a child? There's people today that's not serving God because God took their mother, or God took their father, or God took their brother, or their son, or their daughter. We need to trust God. Amen. We need to realize the world is going around telling the church that everything is smooth sailing, it's okay. I'm telling you, America is a wicked, wicked, vile, ungodly nation. Amen. And judgment is coming. Really, judgment's here. But not like it's going to be here. You and I need to be going to sleep crying unto God. 
We need to be wailing at the altar right. for our loved ones. We take it for granted they're going to come to God like we did. But I'm telling you, some of the people that used to come to me when I was out, Brother Doug, they're still alive and they're not even serving God today. Yep. How many prayer warriors in the last five, six, seven years have you known that have gone to be with the Lord? We need to take the things of God seriously and realize Jesus is coming. And every time God deals with your heart, it's a great privilege. Yes. And it's a great opportunity for you to say, God, help me. Yes. Please, Lord, help me. Amen. God, save me. You see my fear. You see my Jesus. intimidation. You see my apprehension. You see what's keeping me from it. God, whatever it takes, please, please, God, be easy with me. But whatever it takes, straighten me out. Whatever it takes, save me. Awaken me. Help me not to resist you. Help me not to turn my back on you, Lord. Help me to yield to you. Distressful times are coming, but they're not, amen, going to be as easy as people think. I'll just turn to God then. But the distressful times that's coming, God may have different plans than you have. And I want you to know it is a wonderful, wonderful privilege to be in a church today that there's still conviction. Amen. God's Spirit is still dealing with people and drawing people. Amen. And God is dealing and drawing that you might find life I was 24 years old when I knelt down here and got saved. And it was hard because the devil was telling me I wasn't going to be able to party tomorrow. I wasn't going to be able to do this and I wasn't going to be able to do that. Isn't it something just a few days prior to that? The devil was telling me I didn't have all this and that. That now he's telling me I'm not going to be able to do. He's a lying, deceiving sneak. And there's going to come a time at the end of this life that the world is going to look at him and they're going to say, is, is this, is this the one that tormented the nations? Is this the one that lied to me and kept me from serving God? Let's surrender to God. Let's say, and realize when you're saying it, God, whatever it takes, get me right with you. Please don't let me go to hell. Please, 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 Lord. God, I'm sorry. I'm embarrassed that I don't realize the great suffering that you went through for me. I'm sorry that I don't realize all the prayers that's been prayed for me. I'm sorry I don't realize. I remember a time. Brother Doug, I watched him get out of the car. Just a few weeks before, I won the, the best prize for the most people brought to church. Several times. I still got the Bible that I want. I got out and knocked on the door. I was a big old robust grown man, I thought. And I hid like a chicken and pretended I wasn't home. Because I didn't want to face him. Because I didn't want to embarrass myself. Because I, I was so embarrassed for what I had done. And I felt trapped. I don't know what. I don't remember what the reason was. But I do know one thing. I was definitely in bondage. I was definitely in bondage. Like I wasn't in bondage when I was serving the Lord. There was peace when I was serving the Lord. There was trouble sometimes. But God was always there with me. He'd see me through the trouble. But boy, I tell you what, where was the devil when I was feeling all that? He was probably trying to lie to my mind, but he wasn't doing any comforting. Why is it so many people in the world have to have all the, the drinks and the, the whatever? They can't even smile at their companion until they get three, three drinks under their belt. No joy. Yeah. 
What they've got is fake. It's a form of something that God intended us as a church to have. The joy, the peace, the love, the gentleness, the goodness, the meekness, the temperance, the self-control, love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Yeah, God wants us to be faithful as Christians. I want you to know today, I can promise you, I promise you, I've never seen a person come down to a church service, come down to an altar, and surrender their heart and life to the Lord, to where they really, to where they, that it was real, to where they cried, or to where they uh, felt the Lord, and I didn't really feel the Lord the night that I came down and got saved. But I really bombed as a Christian and failed God. But I knew he was real. And if you know God is real, God is reaching for you. Yes. God is reaching for you. Yes. And anything multiplied 10,000 times that the, the world, the flesh, and the devil would be offering you, it is not worth missing out on God. God's what you're looking for. That's it's that God void. Yes. That's what every sinner is searching for. Something to fill that God void. And I'm telling you, you got a God void. If you don't have a fellowship and a relationship with the Lord, there's a God void in your heart. And I beg you, please don't let the devil convince you that we're bad, we're wrong. That it's our fault that you're not serving God. If we were more this and less that, if we were more that and less this, if we were different, you'd do it. God wants you to just trust Him. You're not trusting me for your salvation. Your sons and your daughters, your grandkids, they're coming to a place to where they're going to have to choose for themselves life or death. And the only shot really that you've got at helping them choose life is for you to live in such a way that it's no longer you that's living, but it's God living within you. Amen. God living within you. And um, troubles, that's a part of life. But I'm telling you, we got a comfort. Amen, a friend. Do you want to just settle it today and say, I, I want to serve Jesus? Can you just raise your hand today and say, I want to serve Jesus? Everybody's raising their hand, but two or three people. Thank God, I want to serve Jesus. There's one of them. There's another one. Amen. Can you just raise your hand with everybody else and say, I want to serve Jesus? God, please help me. I want to serve you, Lord. Oh, God, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Would you stand this morning? Every thought that you think, let the thought, I want to be faithful to you, Lord. I want to serve you. I want to love you. Or let whatever thought the Holy Ghost leads your way. But I'm telling you, it will lead you to a place of brokenness before God. And when you get to that place to where you realize, you'll begin to love the Lord then. And not just the insurance policy. When I come to him, I just didn't want to go to hell, but I really didn't love him. But my, when he began to touch me, when he began to show me things, as I read the Bible, things would go through my mind that, oh, they were just horrible. I, I never thought they were any part of me. But they were all through me. Yes. And I needed a Savior. Amen. And you need a Savior. Thank you. Father, you see every heart here today. God, you know what this message thought has done to each heart in life today. And I pray that it'll... Draw us nearer to you, that God, we will submit and surrender to you. God, that we can say, just as I am, 
without one plea but that thou blood was shed for me and that thou bidst me come to thee O Lamb of God I come please help us show us help us to come Lord help us not to wait help us to settle it and surrender you're never going to get your loved one in if you cannot get yourself in please realize that you don't want to be your family's best friend. If they're lost, you want to be used to be your best friends. Your son or daughter or mother or sister or dad or whoever. You want them to be presented to the Savior through you. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Anybody want to make a move? I surrender. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Be praying for the service tonight. Uh, Brother Smith, Brother Donovan Smith will be preaching and ministering for us tonight. And if you haven't heard Brother Smith, he's a dynamic preacher. He's not anything like Brother Doug. <laughs> and he's definitely, definitely, definitely not anything like me. But Brother Doug and him are good preachers. They are blessings. I said that. I was hoping y'all would get it. I really was slamming my right up. I love him. Don't you love him? Amen. What do you love about him? You love how God uses him. Amen. Amen. That's what you love about him. If God don't use us, there ain't nothing much to love. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. I love the Lord. I want you to make it. I want you to make it. Tonight would be a good night for you to come when you don't normally come on Sunday nights. Come on. Get in. The TV's not important. Get in. Yes. Come. Maybe something can be said or done tonight. Maybe the Holy Ghost can move tonight to help you to see the love of God in a way you need to see it. But you do need to see it. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Brother John, I want you to pray and dismiss us in prayer. Just ask God to go with us and protect us till we come again. However you want to pray. Happy Mass, Sister Kelly. You want to dismiss us in prayer? Do you want to dismiss us in prayer? Just ask God to go with us and keep us safe till we come again. You don't have to say that exact thing, but just ask God to keep us and help us. Okay, we'll wait. We'll wait. Praise the Lord. No, it's no problem. I'm, I'm not trying to embarrass you. That was a vote of confidence. You'll do it in the Lord's time. Amen? Amen. 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 Brother Smith, if you will, dismiss us in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. We go with us today as we go out and just look at you and share with others uh, your love. We look forward to tonight. We look forward to your word again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Before you move, let's sing happy birthday and happy anniversary. Uh, to, happy birthday to Brother Nick. And uh, uh, for him holding on, how long you been serving the Lord now, Brother Nick? 2004. Amen. 19 years. Nine years. Praise the Lord. Let's sing happy birthday. A happy birthday. Consider yourself this man.